Um, okay, first step in making money, think outside the square. You need to get your money in the best place possible and it's not always coming from Australia. Okay. Second step, you need to do some really good technical analysis as well because I think these ideas of trying to figure out whether, what, what's going to happen in the world, um, I think that hasn't helped a lot of people. I think it creates a lot of confusion. I think believing beyond all hope that uh, X company will continue to be healthy, uh, I think that's kind of gone the way of the dinosaur as well, hasn't it? Because we've seen a lot of companies we thought were blue chips halve in value, haven't we? We've seen a lot of companies we thought were blue chips go bankrupt, haven't we? Yep. So um, it's really important to have something up your sleeve as a small investor to say, you know what, this cuts through all the hype and just tells me what I need to know. And I truly believe that this is what's going to do it for you. It's called technical analysis. It's just the study of charts, okay? Charts are just price versus time, aren't they? What causes the price to move? It's up there. Supply and demand, isn't it? Supply and demand. Supply and demand. That's Economics 101. If there's more demand than supply, what is the price going to do? Are we not sure? Let me ask that question again. I want a big response. If there's more demand and less supply, where does the price go? Up. If there's more supply and not enough demand, where does the price go? Loudly. Down. Down, doesn't it? Absolutely. Get involved. I want you to put in some effort today. If you put in the effort, you'll get the reward. All right. So prices go up because of supply and demand. Okay. Now, what causes that supply and demand is peripheral. It's the fact that the price is moving up or down tells us what the supply and demand is doing. That's what we need to know. Uh, technical analysis is really the study of supply and demand. Okay? If technical analysis is a study of price, price is supply and demand, we're just studying supply and demand. Who creates supply and demand? Oh, by the way, I'm looking at them. You do. Yeah. Okay, so what we're saying here is that human beings tend to react to certain situations in very predictable ways. We're either governed by our fear or we're governed by our greed, aren't we? And because human beings react in a predictable way, they create predictable price patterns. That's really all we're saying with technical analysis. And as long as you believe human beings will continue to make the same mistakes over and over and over again, you should be fine with this concept. If you think we're all going to learn from our mistakes and figure things out, don't use technical analysis. Okay, step number one with technical analysis, three steps here again, always follow the trend. Let me show you why. Uh, the trend gives us the highest probability of success. Okay? High probability and high profitability. High probability and high profitability. Now, looking at that chart up there, safe to say it's an uptrend. Starts at the bottom left, finishes at the top right. Um, I wonder what we should do. I mean, how many people looking at that chart feel that they want to put their hard-earned money on the line and buy that right now? How many people in the room would buy that right now? <whistles> two. Two gingerly putting up their hand. How many people think it's too expensive? Show of hands. All right, that's not good enough. I think everybody's got an opinion on this. How many people think that one's too expensive? Show of hands. Much better. Okay, good. Um, you know what I think that is? I think that's so cheap. I think that stock is so cheap. And that response doesn't surprise me. And it doesn't surprise me that people lose money in the markets. They get it wrong. So I look at that and I think that's so cheap. You know how I know that's cheap? Because everybody wants to own it. Everybody wants to own that stock, don't they? That's how the price got up there. Did the price get up there because nobody wants to own it? No, the price got up there because there's so much what? It starts with D. There's so much demand. So people who don't have their stock, they are demanding it, aren't they? People who have their stock, are they supplying it? No, they're not. There's no supply. There's no supply, all demand. And if you're not supplying a stock, even after it's gone up that much, you're not supplying it because you think it's cheap. You're demanding it because you think it's cheap, don't you? So what I'm trying to tell you here is that the market, not you, the market thinks that's cheap, don't they? The market thinks that stock's cheap, yet you just told me it was expensive. I've got a newsflash for you. It doesn't matter what you think, does it? It doesn't matter what you think. It matters what the market thinks. So start to learn how to understand how the market's thinking, isn't it? And that is really cheap. Uh, let's look, that, that circle is where it was. I fast forwarded that into time. Look at that. It went from 14 to 30. You, thought, you all thought it was expensive. It went from 30 to 60 in another 18 months. That was really cheap, wasn't it? And the market was telling you it was cheap, yet you said it was expensive. Okay, let's look at another one. What, what's that one? ABC Learning Centers. 
What's that one trading at at the moment? Zero. What will it be trading at in 12 months' time? Zero. What's the trend there? Your friend. Yeah, trend is your friend, isn't it? Now, normally people look at that and they say, well, that looks really cheap, doesn't it? That looks really cheap because it was nine bucks, now it's four bucks, it must be really cheap. If I buy this at four bucks and it goes back to nine bucks, I double my money. It's really cheap. It's a good blue chip company. It pays good dividends, doesn't it? It's really cheap. Yet I look at that and I go, that is so expensive. That is the most expensive stock I've ever seen. Do you know how I know that's expensive? It's because everybody wants to supply it, don't they? Nobody wants to own it. If nobody wants to own something, they'll supply it, won't they? They'll put, create supply in the market. And even at that low level, they're happy to supply. Why are they happy to supply at that low level? Because they know it's going to go down further, isn't it? Who's demanding this stock right now apart from you? Nobody else is. So I look at that, the market looks at that and says that's expensive, yet you look at it and you go, oh, that's cheap. Of course, it's gone to zero now. That's, how, that's what most investors are doing, walking up and down George and Pitt Street right now. They're looking at the market in the exact opposite way that you need to look at the market to understand what the market's thinking. We walk around always thinking that what we think is important, don't we? Not when it comes to the share market. Share market is unlike anything else that you've ever experienced in your life. 